<laughs> All right, guys. So thank you for getting on our call tonight. It is the last day of the month. Holy crap. How are we already gone through January? It's crazy. So time has gone fast and we got to keep chugging along here. So we're getting right into February. Guys, I posted the calendar for this month today, um, added a couple things with the group. So if you guys have any people, any coaches that you want to get in a group, or if you yourself wants to get in a group, if you need a refresher of anything, or if you're an Emerald coach and you want to take it to the next level of diamond, um, please make sure that you post below that or personal message your upline or myself and let us know that you want in these groups and we will make sure that you get in. Um, also real quick team cup challenge. If you haven't heard me yapping about it, um, please make sure that you look in the team page because I've been tagging a couple people in the video that I made a few weeks back just to talk about what the team cup is. Guys, this is something that's very, very important for you to grow your business. Um, every time I've had a cup challenge, so here's my, this is like my love hate relationship with the cup challenge. You guys can tell me if you agree, if you've been in a cup challenge before, but I hate them because it challenges me. Even though I, I love a challenge, but I hate knowing that I have to work extra, extra, extra hard. So I hate when I hear, oh, there's another cup challenge coming up. But at the end of the month, I'm like, ah, bang. So glad I did it because now I just got that much more volume. I just helped that many more people and my business just grew that much. Every single time we have these, your business is going to build more momentum if you are willing to push yourself a little bit harder and do what you need to do. Um, so we have made four new groups today alone with our team. Um, if you guys be in a cup challenge, please post or raise your hand or say I need in one and we will make sure that we set you guys up uh, because it is really important. It is something that uh, is vital to your business. This is, this is your business, so we're not going to force you to get into one. Um, this is your choice, and um, if you wanna, if you wanna do something with your business, if you wanna take it to the next level, this is definitely something. It's an opportunity sitting right in front of you. If you guys haven't listened to the National Wake Up Call on Monday by Jamie Fitzpatrick, he was awesome. It was amazing. I will post the recording in the team page as well. Um, that was yesterday, wasn't it? It was yesterday, Monday, today's Tuesday. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it was really, really good. And he like hit the nail on the head talking about inviting. Guys, a lot of us think that mm, inviting can be like, you can just throw it away and not do that vital behavior. Um, but it is vital for a reason. They say invite, invite, invite for a reason. It's because you need to freaking invite people. Like if you want to do something with your business, you want to help people. You can't just wait for them to come to you. You need to go to them. And Jamie talked about that. And he talked about the percentage he spends of his business. 50 to 60% is on inviting. He talked about Bonnie Engel. She's a number two coach in the company. She spends about 70% of her business inviting people. And I know it's something really scary. And I just talked about this in both of my training groups today. Um, it's something that's really scary that we don't like to do. It's out of our comfort zones, but we know that success starts to happen at the end of your comfort zone. You have to be willing to do the things that our others aren't willing to do to be successful. And that is inviting people and saying, hey girl, how's it going? Do you wanna join my next fitness challenge that's starting? This is an opportunity for you to reach your health and fitness goals, get help with your nutrition, and get daily support and motivation along the way. Um, it's just an easy startup conversation, easy invite. You don't have to like, Tell everyone about what Beachbody is and when it was founded and the CEOs and what programs are involved and how much challenge pack is. And, oh, don't forget about Shakeology. You don't have to do all of that right away. It's a simple invite, like I just said. And when someone is interested, you say, awesome. Do you mind telling me what has you interested and what are your health and fitness goals? Keep it simple, sweet, and to the point. And then you just have a conversation. Um, I feel like a lot of us just overthink it. and we think that you just have to give them this, this, and this. You don't have to. Just take it step by step. Have a conversation. Don't scare them away. And if you come up with a conversation, ask your upline coach. That is what we're here for. Okay? So 
make sure you get yourselves out there and start inviting people. Make sure you put yourselves on mute so <laughs> we don't have a lot of background noise. And let's get to it. So I talked about inviting because guys, cup challenge is coming up and that's what you need to do. To grow your business, you need to be inviting a ton of people. This is all about planting seeds. So if those people are saying no, or if they're ignoring you, hey, guess what? You've invited that many more people and somebody is gonna say yes. Somebody is going to want your help, but you have to be willing to put yourselves out there. All right, enough talk for me. We are going to hear from a special guest today. So we have Bianca O'Brien talking today. Um, she is going to be speaking on time management because she's a rock star at it. She is very, very busy. She is a mom of three girls, right? You got like a teenager. I don't even know how you have a teenager because you don't look like you should have a teenager. But I know you have one because you just posted a really cute picture of her today, right? <laughs> um, so she has three girls. She is a registered nurse. She is also a flight attendant for Delta, right? Or were you? You are you both right now? I still I still fly. I don't I don't nurse anymore. No, no. All right. I quit I quit the hospital last year. So she does everything and she works full time with her business. So hold on a second. All right, guys, just make sure you meet yourselves. Um, so she's really really busy and has a lot going on. Um, but what's really cool is she has not made any excuse not to grow her business and now she is seeing the benefits of it. She's a three-star diamond coach. She has personally sponsored nine diamond coaches, which is awesome. Um, and she is a success club legend, which means she has hit success club for 24 consecutive months in a row, which is like crazy. Um, but she is here to say that it's totally doable, even though you're really busy, because we can all say we're busy, but we're all a different kind of busy. It's just a matter of what you really want and your priorities. So, Bianca, I'm going to give it to you. Does that sound good? <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Deja. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for letting me talk on your call. I'm, like, totally honored. Um, I'm going to apologize ahead of time if you hear one of two things. Either kids screaming in the background because my husband's battling to put them to bed. I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and this is, like, the witch hours, right? And the other thing is I have this, like, device under my foot because I have plantar fasciitis. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but I have, like, a foot massager going off, so it's going in the background. <laughs> But um, just thanks, th thanks, Idra. I just wanted to say hi to those of you that don't know me. Um, most of you don't. My name is Bianca. I, like Idra was saying, am really, really busy. I'm a mom. Um, I have three girls, a 15-year-old, a 4-year-old, and a 2-year-old. Um, I did work full-time nursing, and I've also flight attendant. I've been with Delta for like 15 years. It's all I've done. Um, and I worked both, both jobs full-time with a newborn when I was invited into coaching. Now, I didn't sign up because I wanted to do a business or anything like that. Um, thankfully, my husband does well, and we were very well financially. I had no intentions of starting a business. It was my, totally not my radar. I did not even know what Beachbody was until my crazy best friend, which is how I met Deidre, um, forced me into becoming a coach so that I could, she could help me lose the 65 pounds that I've been dragging for eight months since I had had my middle daughter, Alessandra. Um, literally eight months into the pregnancy, um, after the pregnancy, I was sitting on a couch and I saw an infomercial for insanity and I started doing insanity and Kristen's like, that's what I do. And she's like, and I was like, yeah, I'm like dying over here. I didn't want the shake. I didn't know. I didn't even know there was a shake. And she's like, you need to get this shake. And I'm like, no, I don't drink shakes. And she's like, no. And then there's this like, you're doing insanity. That's totally inappropriate for you. Like you have like 65 pounds to lose. You're doing the wrong program. And of course, when your friends tell you something, you just kind of like, Psh, whatever. Two months later, she's lost like 30 pounds and I'm still stuck because I'm doing insanity and eating cheeseburgers and pizza at night. So finally... She talked me into trying to shake. I had one sip of Shakeology, fell in love with it, started doing my research on the nutritional um, background of it and just like fell in love with it for the nursing purposes. So I signed up to be a coach because she needed me to. And I also signed up because I wanted a discount on Shakeology. So that's a little bit of a background on my story. But just to give you guys a little idea, I had a very difficult um, baby right? My baby did not want to nurse. She was, she was just, a she's still, she's four years old. She's still very difficult. We call her Hurricane Alley. Um, she's never slept. She's, she's just, she's just one of those. And I had her and I had just started um, my career. I just moved to Florida. So I just started in a new hospital. I was learning med surge nursing, which is like, 
completely like, uh, you don't want to mess with it. I was doing that and I was working on my fitness journey and I was still flying. So I really didn't have the time at all to do this business. So when she invited me um, and she said, you know, people started noticing the weight coming off and they wanted me as their coach. I was like, why? And no. And I kept sending people to her. But really the mission of Beachbody and just how we are here to help other people get results as well, you know, it was something like inside of me that started tugging at my heart and saying, other moms need to know about this. You need to get on board and you need to start doing it. So that mission was what pulled me. And I said, okay, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try it. But being the like most disorganized person that you will ever meet and having no time, I really figured out that I was going to have to do some work on the time management part. Because if I was going to make this happen, I was going to have to figure out how. And I am one of those that is like, you give me a task, I'm going to figure out how to do it. So I, I started researching, reading about time management, and um, I figured out how to incorporate systems into my business. And this is what I want to show you guys. I'm going to like break it down into like the three different phases of my business from new coach because I don't know how many new coaches we have on on the call and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how I be, I had that switch where I started working as you know as a full-time coach and then finally after I quit my nursing job and I started doing this full-time and this is what I do now so I'm going to show you a slide because I am totally totally a squirrel and I will go I'll start talking about team cup or something so um move this over. Can you guys see my slide? Okay. All right. Perfect. So, um, basically if you guys don't, if you guys give that excuse that you're busy all the time, you're not going to like me very much. And <laughs> the reason is I just, I'm just going to hand it to you guys. Um, you do have time. You are just not managing it very well. And I want you guys to stop for a moment before I start talking about this and really have like a gut check moment. Is your life organized? Is it just, are you, are you saying that you don't have time for your business because everything is just so cluttered? And so disorganized that you just can't see yourself doing anything because that's, I'll tell you guys, that was me. And that's what, that was the biggest excuse that I had every time I didn't hit success club. And, you know, uh, every time I missed one of my goals, it was because I don't have time for this. You know, I, I made every single excuse, but it always came back to time. And that's just because my life was a hot mess, right? So I, I want you guys to have that gut check moment before we start and think about like, could managing your time better roll over into your life and make it easier and, and better all around. Not just for your business, but all around. Because if it can, then I want you guys to put your listening ears on. That's how I talk to Allie. Turn on your listening ears <laughs> and, and hear what I have to say and like really soak in this information because I guarantee you if you, pay, if you pay close attention to the tips that I'm going to give you, you're going to get one or two things out of it that are really going to help you. So this I did for my team because I, if there's one excuse I do not want to hear is that they're busy, right? When you tell me you're busy, you're really not going to get a whole lot of sympathy from me. So I actually did the math. Um, I am not an emerald, but <laughs> I do like to spit out facts. And if it, and I put this graph together because if let's say you work a 40 hour a week and you work eight hours a day and you sleep eight hours a day, right? Because you do that. You commute to work one hour. So half an hour going, half an hour coming back. Um, let's say you sit down and you actually cook dinner and you sit down with your family. You take about an hour and a half a day to do that. And then for showering, getting ready, you take about an hour a day. That gives you a total of 40 free hours a week. 40 hours. That's a full-time job. So where is that time going? Where are those 40 hours going that you say that you don't have time? I understand moms have, you know, different activities. We're driving kids here and there, but I'm going to show you how to utilize that time into your business so you don't have to necessarily find extra time, but just how to use the time that you have now wisely. First of all, stop and think, how are you spending that time? Because I remember very clearly thinking, looking at Melanie, for example, or, you know, the other top coaches and just thinking, how the heck did they do what they do? How do they manage an organization that size? And I'm sitting here and I can't manage five coaches or I can't, you know, I can't manage my team or my business or anything. They, we all have 24 hours in a day. So it's just how we're spending the time that is going to differentiate whether you're using that time wisely or not. For me, personally, it was Facebook. Instagram and Amazon has soaked up all of my time. Now, Facebook is very easy for, for a new coach to distract, you know, for, for uh, a new coach to get distracted by. 
Um, and it's very easy for us to say we're scrolling and we're working on our business, but we know deep inside that's not really actually working your business. You're scrolling. You're doing what most people do. And you're not going to get paid for what most people don't do if you're doing what most people do. So if you want to be successful, you have to find out what you know. 98% of the population is doing and do the opposite. So if they're scrolling Facebook, you need to be working on Facebook. Instagram is another one. And I'll be honest with you guys, in the beginning, I was so, my, my self-control is so weak that I had to get to the point where I deleted Facebook off my phone. And all I had was the Facebook groups. Um, I installed the, new, actually, I still have it to this day, the news, the killed the news feed. Um, I don't know if you guys know about that, but you can um, do a Google Chrome extension on your um, laptop so that you can't see your news feed, your Facebook news feed. I actually still have that. Um, and then I actually deleted the Facebook app from my phone and all I used was messengers and the groups um, app to be to check into my groups now with my challenge tracker you really don't need Facebook for anything and I'll show you guys you're gonna be like well how do I know who to invite and you know because I know that's what's going through your head but I'll show you guys how I do what my system looks like so you know um, Instagram I don't scroll I don't I actually am not a big Instagram person so I don't know I can't give you guys too much tips with that but I did used to scroll it up, scroll it up, scroll it a lot and Amazon and Pinterest Pinterest is just gone from my life I never got anybody from there but it used to soak up all my time and Amazon I just don't do it I do it when it's not business hours but find what it is for you those are my things you might have other things you just have to stop and think like where am i spending all this time where is this time going so this is just for you guys to have on the back of your mind that you're probably spending time on things that are not productive and are not helping your business so i remember um hearing you know i think it was melanie on one of her first calls on one of my first like calls that i listened to um she talked about something about having a system right you need to have a system for you know organizing your your business you have to have systems for everything I was like, what the heck is a system and i just kept hearing that over and over i was like obviously i don't have one otherwise i would know what it is so i actually looked it up and it turns out I do have systems. I have systems for everything. System is a set of principles or procedures according, I can't see my thing, but you guys can probably read it. So something's done, an organized scheme or method of doing something. So like, let's like say the, the way you get dressed in the morning, right? How you shower and you take it, and you dry yourself and you put your socks on first and then you put your left leg in and then you put your, right, like that's a system. It's your system for doing that, for getting dressed. So um, I was like, okay, I need to come up with systems. Now I, at least I had a plan and I knew what I needed to do so and it does shorten the, the road to the goal so that that was a, a breakthrough moment that if you guys don't have systems or you don't know what that is that's a good starting point okay I need to develop my own system for doing things for inviting for onboarding new coaches for teaching them for duplicating my system for onboarding new challengers all those things have systems I'm gonna show I'm gonna share with you guys some of the ones I used so things are going to look a little different um, based on where you are in your business right now, right? So if you're a new coach, I'll tell you, I'll share with you guys how it was for me as a new coach. Um, I worked full time at the hospital and I flew as well. So I really probably had maybe one or two days a week off when I had that. When I had those two days off, it was usually just to catch up on laundry and do things at home. You know, I have the kids and the house still. So it looked, it was very busy. It was much busier than it was than it is today, thank God. That today is a little calmer but this is what it was back then so basically I would get up in the morning I had to be at work at six o'clock and I work up work literally 13 hour shifts and I would wake up at 4 30 in the morning and I'll get my workout in at that time and that's when I would do my power hour which was really 30 minutes because I didn't have much more time than that what I would do on that on that time would be check my back office see if I had any new customers or if I had any you know any new coaches or anything popping up or anything out of the whack I would look for the um, the alerts from each body the updates I would look through those that was the first thing I did every morning I just got in the habit of checking my back office then I would do my invites and follow-up so if I had any invites from the day before my messenger I never, I was never the type to be like, I have to answer that message right away. I've always let people kind of sit there and I would go back and check the next day. And I think that that was, that was really good for me because just created that kind of um, consistency in my business. People do not expect for me to answer right away. They know that I'm really busy and they know that I'll get back to them when I can. But I always went back through the, the messages that from the night before, from the day before, and I'll respond to those. Um, and then if I had, um, if I had, 
to, if I was inviting, if I hadn't reached Success Club yet, I would send three to five invites at that time. And it was a very simple copy and script that I had on Evernote on my phone, the way I would invite people. And um, I don't know if we have time. How long um, did I talk too much already? Because I would love to talk to you guys a little bit about my power hour and what my inviting system looks like. And basically, it's very simple. Very, you guys are going to, like, this is going to blow your mind. So I really, I literally have a little notebook. See, I have one for this year. I have one for last year. And I start my month. I make a little tab with January on it. And I write 100 names down. And the way I find these names is I go back through my posts, anything that's Beachbody related, and I write down everybody that's liked or commented on my posts. I write their names first on my list. And then second, I look and oh, and then from the month before, anybody that I've invited and said, you know, this is not a good month, I'm kind of broke or whatever, their names go automatically like next month. So I have already have February half filled which I really should have had February already done, but I'm a little behind. And I'll show you guys. So see, I already have names down. This is not it. There it is. You see? So these are people that told me no last, last month because something was happening, and I just asked them, can I check with you again next, next month when I start my next challenge? And they usually say yes, so I write their names down first. And then I go back and I look through my face, my beach body posts, and then I see everybody that's been liking and commenting and their names go on there as well. And then um, I go back and I just check through my friends list, kind of like alphabetically, really. Anybody that has not been invited before and their names get added last to my list until I have 100 names. And then every day I would go through and I would invite three to five people from that list, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. And that was it. And that was my invite. It literally took me like five to 10 minutes. And I did that religiously. I think the big thing about this is consistency. I actually put that there on that slide. If you do this every day, you're going to, to have your success club points. I guarantee you guys, but you have to be very consistent with it. And so that's what I would do during that power hour. That was really like 30 minutes. I would go, um, I'll check into all my groups, say hello to my challengers. And then on my way to work is when I would listen to my personal development, which I've never, ever, ever, ever skipped. I've always been huge on personal development. I wouldn't be a coach if it wasn't for personal development. So I, I listen to it every day. I do. And now I listen to like two, three hours of it. I, I love personal development. So I'm big on that. Um, and then I would do, and then I, anybody that responded to those messages, those invites, I would actually set up a time to call them on the way home because I knew I was working. So I'll be like, okay, I'll be getting out around seven o'clock. Is it okay if I give you a call? And they would, you know, give me their phone number. And on the way home, I would call them. And that's how I would close my, my clients, my new, um, my new challengers. And then um, on the days off, remember I had like two to three days off when I did, or when I had five, you know, whenever I had a little bit of time, I'll create all my posts ahead of time. I would find content that was good, relative, and I would go into work. Before I went into work, I would take my picture that I was working out. That, you guys, was huge. That, um, those posts at 4.30 in the morning that I was doing every single day, people were so attracted by that. They were so, like, in awe that I was that dedicated. And I don't even think that it was that I was dedicated. It was just that I was consistent. They always saw me doing it. They were like, oh, my gosh, if she can get up at 4.30 in the morning to do this, then I can do it, too. And I kid you not, that's what people used to tell me. And I, people still comment on that. And that was like, I quit nursing, like, almost two years ago, I mean, like a year ago. And people still talk about that. So that was huge. So I know you guys are working out, and I know you guys are doing it, but are you sharing it? Because that is like 50% of your invites is through your posts. If you're that consistent and they know that, you know, you're doing this every day, they know that they can sign up with you and count on you to be there a year from now. That's what it creates in their mind. That consistency is what creates that trust that they're going to be like, okay, I'm going to sign up with this girl because I know a year down the road, she's still going to be here because she's that consistent. But if you guys post today and then you don't post again for like two weeks, in their minds, they're like, well, I don't know if I sign up with her two weeks from now, she's still going to be here. So that creates a huge, huge trust with your audience and with, uh, with your followers. So if you're posting, if you're working out, drinking your shakes, take those pictures, share your journey because that's huge. And then just trust the process because I know that seems like that 30 minutes a day is so small and you think that you have to do this great big thing, invite all these people and do it. No, you really don't. It's that little small thing that you do every day that creates the big results. I did this for a year. 
and I went diamond doing this. I, I made about a thousand dollars a week doing this. I was able to leave my nursing job doing this. And this was small in my eyes. I was like, there's no way I'm ever going to get there. And it was just like, I put it in my head that I wasn't going to quit. Like quitting was not an option. So I just did what I had to do. I put one foot in front of the other and I was just consistent with it and faithful. And I just trusted that it was going to work and it did. So, and then I moved into business builder. So let me give you a little bit more of the background story. In this meantime, that I was doing that, getting healthy and all that stuff, I got pregnant. <laughs> so I got pregnant with my baby and um, everybody's like, oh no, she's going to go away and her business is going to die because she's pregnant. Nope, my business did great. I continued with my journey. I continued to invite. I didn't change a thing. I did everything that I did before. It didn't change a single thing. In fact, I think it even opened up my audience for people to, you know, uh, people that weren't following me. They're like, look at that pregnant chick can do it. And so she can do it. I can do it. Um, and I did. And then when it was time for me to go back to work, right. And then I took my, yeah, I had the baby and then I took my pregnancy leave and I was off work for three months. And when it was time for me to go back to work, my husband's like, you know, you're making enough money. You don't have to go back to work if you don't want to. I'm like, dog. I don't like this place anyways. I never like this people. I, I never like this job and I want to do it. And so I quit. I quit nursing and it was so amazing because I had this little baby and I didn't want to leave her. I didn't want to leave her. I knew it was my last baby and I was just like, I want to be home. I don't want to go back to work. And so I didn't. I just quit. One day I got up and I said, I don't want to do this anymore. And I could do that. I had that liberty because I had been faithful with my business for the year prior. So just a little background for you guys. At that point, I became a business builder. So now I had a team. I had um, challengers that had had results and that had, had become coaches themselves. I'm not a big recruiter. I don't attract people to, who want to work the business because I think because I didn't, I wasn't attracted to it that way. So people come in, they have a great transformation, they become coaches, and that's probably 90% of my team. Um, at that point, I realized that I had to switch it up a little bit, right? Because now I had to dedicate some time to building my organization, building my team, and helping my coaches and creating duplication. So I started planning a little bit more this is when planning came into it because at that point the year before it was just a matter of survival i had to do what i had to do just to get through at this point i started planning and thinking ahead so that's when i started um, doing my marketing strategy i plan ahead the month before i still do that to do that to this day i have my planning posts i know that i need to announce a challenge group about two weeks before it's going to happen if i want people to actually sign up for it i don't, I don't want to you know the night before announce a challenge group and, and expect that 10 people are going to show up. It's just not going to happen. So you have to talk about it for a while. You actually have to kind of beat it like a dead horse until wow. people pick up on it and be like, oh, yeah, she's hosting a challenge group. Maybe I should join. And in the meantime, I'm inviting for it. Um, as my demands increased, right, now my coaches needed help. I had more challengers, more customers. I was home with the kids, which was a whole different ball game. I feel like when I had less time, I was more productive because I was more focused. I had that little bit of time to get the task done, so I used that little bit of time and I got it done. When I had all this time to get stuff done, it was like I was scattered. And I was like, oh, I can do it later because I felt like I had more time and it was just, you know, an illusion. <laughs> so I had to learn how to get laser focused. I, I had to um, ask my husband for help. You know, you watch the girls like he's doing right now for me to be on the call. You watch the girls so I can be laser focused for an hour. I still do the same thing that I did before with the system with the inviting has not changed. I still do that same power hour. So what I used to build my business is what I still do to this day. I average about... Um, 20, um, 20 to 25 probably success club points every month so it works and it's not changed I still do the same thing um, I do I do dedicate some time to my coaches I do one-on-one -on -one calls with them when they need it but I don't um, overspend time there either you know um, I don't I used to think that I had to reinvent the wheel and, and do everything myself because I'm, I'm a Ruby and I like to uh, no, I have to control and it's only my stuff that works no and then I just let that go because they do just fine with the training that Beachbody has and Melanie has and all they do just fine it does you don't have to reinvent stuff and spend time there don't fall into that trap I did um, but I do make videos, blogs, scripts, um, anything that I hear the question a lot to um, goes into a YouTube video. I have a video for the 21 Day Fix. I have a video for Court of Force. It's the minute a program comes out, I order it, I unbox it, I record a video, I explain how it works, and I 
leave that on YouTube every time somebody's interested in a program. I walk them through my questionnaire when they are ready to sign up. They're like, when they show interest in a program, I grab that video and I send it to them. And I don't have to explain it. This like makes my life so much easier. So this is huge tip for you guys. If you don't like to make videos, just do it. Just do it. I'm not even gonna give you tips. I'm just gonna say start doing it. Because if you go on my YouTube channel and you look at like my first videos, you're gonna laugh your butt off. Like it was horrible, but you get better at it. So at that point, you have to get organized. You have to track your business. Also something I didn't do very well. I did, I always had this, but now I use, um, well, back then when I was doing this, I was using Excel spreadsheets, but now I use Teamsy for follow-up so people don't fall through the cracks because I do talk to a lot of people. So um, whatever system you use, if it's, if it's still working with a notebook, awesome. If not, then get Teamsy, get Streak, get whatever works for you, but track your business. Don't let that, at this point in the game, as a business builder, you can't afford not to track your business. Um, don't lose sight of your why, right? Because you're going, this is the time in your business when it's going to feel like you're doing a lot of work for very little return. This is the, the little, um, the hard area. I think this was the toughest time for me as a coach. I kept thinking, did I do the right thing leaving my job? At least that was a steady paycheck. And then, you know, we work with commissions. Sometimes our paychecks are great. You know, sometimes they're not that great. So it's very volatile. And I, I kept questioning myself, did I do the right thing? And I just had to keep a focus on my why. And why was I doing this? I really wanted to be home with my kids. Was it worth it? A hundred percent. Would I do it even if though I'm not making as much money sometimes? And I was like, yes. And I just didn't lose sight of my why I knew why I was doing it. I knew I was going to make it work. So don't lose sight of that. Whatever it is that compelled you to do this, that's going to pull you through. You really have to hold on to it. Keep it fresh. Keep it in front of you, you know, whatever you have to do. And then don't forget to do the vital behaviors. <laughs> this is an old um, slide. It's for vital behaviors now. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so last slide, full-time coach, team, um, as a team leader, things change a little bit. You have to really get good with your time, set business hours, and have a system, have like a routine that you follow every day. Um, I get up in the morning, 5.30 in the morning before my girls are up, they get up at seven, so I have an hour and a half to get my workout in, my PD in, and my, remember those, that, those follow-ups that I did, going through my messages from the previous night, I, go, I do that before they're up. Once they're up, I'm theirs. I don't work my business until my baby falls asleep, which is around one o'clock, two o'clock, and she sleeps for three hours. That's the time I, the time I work my business. I, that's it. I, I'm a three-star diamond coach, and I, I manage, I run my business in three hours. So, you know, you don't have to be spending a whole lot more than that. Um, that was another trap I fell into. Don't fall into it. You don't need to be creating stuff and doing out. No, it should be 80% your business. Notice that this is the same as the previous slide. Still 80% your business, 20% your team. If you're not recruiting, moving your team forward, guess what? You're going to stall because people are going to quit. They're going to stop doing this and you're going to be where is the team that I had and it's gone. So you have to keep on pumping that well and bringing new people and that also keeps the energy of your team alive and just kind of moving forward. Um, if there's things that, out, that soak up your time, like my house is huge and it used to take me a whole day to clean it up. I pay $85, a lady comes in every week and cleans that up. I sell two challenge packs, I call it a day. I hate cleaning, it works for me. Find whatever it is that works for you that you hate to do that soaks up your time and then outsource that. Let somebody else do it. And do delegate to your team, trust them. I told you guys, I'm a Ruby, so I don't want to do everything myself. I think it, I, if I want something done right, it has to be me. But you know what? You have awesome people in your team that are just as capable, if not more capable, and do things better than you. And you just have to trust them and kind of like empower them to grow into that leadership as well. If you don't do that, you're going to be stuck doing everything yourself the whole time. And you're not creating leaders. So it's kind of like you're shooting yourself in the foot in that one. Um, don't slack on your PD. I had to put that back there. And then that, something that I also do now as a team leader is I go to a lot of live events like Tony Robbins, Danny Johnson, GoPro, whatever it is that they have out there. I go and I bring that training back to my team because I know they can't, you know, it's expensive to go to those things. So sometimes I just do that just for more for their benefit. Actually, I benefit more, but I try to teach them the stuff that I learned. And then focus on your team needs, put their goals ahead of your own. Um, don't get stuck on the rank stuff where you're pushing people to do things that you know they don't want to do that just doesn't work you're going to feel bad about yourself and it really doesn't work they're going to go and you know they're going to become diamonds and they're going to drop or they're going to not they're doing it for the wrong reasons you have to really dig and find their whys and then help them get their goals not yours um and that's just the voice of experience here <laughs> 
Um, organ and now I organize my days by, th by theme, and this helps my scattered brain stay organized. So on Monday, I check on my challengers. On Tuesday, I do all my inviting for the week. So say I still invite five people a day. On Tuesday, I'll send out 25 invites, and I'll deal with that as it goes. That's just how it works for me now, rather than doing invites every day. Um, and then on Wednesday, I check on my coaches. I check my downline. I make sure everything is good for the next day. Thursday, I work on special projects. I'm working on my website now and just little things that I have going on in the back of my mind. That those are the days I use to work on those. On Friday, I buffer, which is I schedule all my posts and all that stuff, do some planning. Saturdays, I take off, enjoy with my family. On Sunday, I focus on my journey. I do extra PD and I do my meal plans, my meal prep. So that's basically how I run my business now. And then just one last thing, key to success, don't forget that whatever you do, however you create those systems, whatever it is that you start doing, it has to be duplicatable, otherwise it doesn't work. If you can't duplicate it and teach it to your coaches, you might as well not do it. Have a clear vision of where you want to go and make sure it's congruent with the sacrifices that you're willing to make. There's no point in you saying that you want to be a 10 star, you know, a, a top 10 coach if you're not willing to do the sacrifice to get there. And if your vision for your for your life and your goal don't align, meaning if you're you want to be a top 10 coach, but you want to spend, you know, five hours a day with your kids, that's really not gonna work. So you have to kind of reanalyze where you want to go and what kind of sacrifices you're you're willing to make on the short term so that you can reach that vision because you are going to have to make sacrifices and you know I, I did a lot of that I went to sleep late I woke up early I sacrificed a lot of sleep I got to where I am today because I was willing to do that so ask yourself if you're willing to do those things as well like I don't watch tv there's a, I mean I don't have a life pretty much <laughs> but it was worth it to me because I know that now I can be home with my kids and you know my vision for my life of being a present mom it's it's materializing in front of me so um it was definitely worth it so think about that and do you guys have any questions? I talk fast, right? <laughs> Everybody's like, <laughs> that was crazy awesome. girl. <laughs> no, I loved it. There we go. All right. Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. I was wondering if, um, was, is Facebook the primary social media where you built your business from? Or what mm -hmm. other sites do you use? Yeah, Facebook is my jam. I really only use Facebook. I do, I have an Instagram account and every once in a while I'll get somebody from there, but I really, I can't even say, I don't invest time in it. Like I don't comment or I don't engage with people and I just post there to post there. Um, just because I, it's easy, like you just share it, you know? But um, Facebook, yeah, yeah, definitely Facebook. It so works. If you, if you send someone a message, say in December and they didn't even respond, you invited them to a challenge group and they didn't respond in December, but they like every single post in January, you would go ahead and invite them in February. Ah, I'm glad you asked that. I'm actually going to pull up my messenger. This is probably violating their, their, their <laughs> privacy, but I actually just sent a bunch of those today. So I saw that you saw my message. I'm going to show you guys because it works. I, te I taught my team this too, and they were like, really, you do this and it works? I'm like, yeah, totally does. Um, let's see. A lot of it's in Portuguese because I speak Portuguese. I'm like, I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So, okay. So this one, this girl didn't respond. So, I don't know. That's not it. Let's see if I can find it. It worked. It worked with a lot of people in Portuguese too. So basically what I do is I send them a message and I ask them, like, I'm not sure if you saw my message. Hold on, this girl, yeah, I think she was one of one, them. One, one. Mm, maybe not. I forget who it was. There was one in English I was going to show you guys. But this is so good to look at her stuff. Like, look at, <laughs> look at how she's talking to people. Yeah. So I did actually send someone a message today. I was like, not sure if you saw my message or not, but this is what I do. I will go, I'll give them two days to respond. If they don't respond, I say, Hey, um, 
I, I'm not sure if you saw my message or not. I'm a busy mom. I know sometimes I see things and I don't respond. So I don't know if that's what happened, but I just wanted to, um, like, um, to let you know that I didn't mean anything bad by my invite. You know, I didn't, I didn't mean to offend you. I hope I didn't, you know, it's kind of tricky when you do these, um, challenge group invites, because I don't want to try, I don't want to try to imply that you need to join a challenge group. And I just kind of elaborate on that and it works. And they, nine times out of ten, nobody wants to offend you. So they will respond and they're like, no, you didn't know oh I, I remember who it was I'm gonna show you guys because she's actually signing up Christine look at this I'm gonna show you guys this gets exciting I know <laughs> <laughs> look hi Christine how are you I'm not to see I had messaged her on Sunday and she hadn't responded you see and I went back today and I said, hi, Christine, how are you? I'm not sure if you saw my message and forgot to respond. God knows how often I do that. Life is crazy when you have little ones at home. LOL. But I just wanted to say, I didn't mean to bug you or offend you in any way. Just thought I'd reach out and invite because situations change. You never know who might need some help. Anywho, have a wonderful day. Hope I'm not bugging you. She was like, oh, I was just watching your post about the book on the doorstep. And I said, ha ha. And then I said, she said, oh my God, you can never offend me. Your story, I love your story and watching is so inspirational. Ah, uh, thank you. You know, this inviting ch to challenge groups thing is a little tricky because sometimes it can be perceived the wrong way. Like I'm implying that people would should lose weight and that's not it at all. I just know that they're fun and everyone has a little room for improvement, no matter how healthy they are. My biggest fear is that people will take me the wrong way. And she's actually signing up. Look, that is we started awesome. talking, you see? This is very and she's signing up. So how long has that conversation been going on? Mm, let's see. Forever. This girl has been giving me the runaround for a long time. But that just comes to show you guys. Look, look she started talking to her in 2015. Mm hmm yeah. And she's, she's liked a lot of my posts. I have invited, this is not the first time I've invited her. I've invited her a couple of times. That is awesome. And she's always like, you know, and then I just started doing this. The thing about, you know, going back to them and saying, I saw that you saw it and I'm sorry if I'm bugging you, but you know, I just wanted to make sure that that's it. You just, you know what it is. We overthink this. We really overthink it. She might have just seen it and forgotten about it. Or maybe she just like, oh, I don't want her to think that she offended me. You know, whatever way I picked up the conversation, I always leave a door open for them to run out of. I never like quarrel them in and say, you have to do this, or I'm inviting you. I always say, oh, it's okay if it's not for you, you know? I just, I'm just thought I'd ask, you know, leave the door open. And if they have that escape, they feel comfortable talking to you. You have to disarm them because when we're coaches and we message them, people are already freaking out. Oh, here she comes. So you have to really show that you care, you know, that you, you really just wanting to talk to them and to see how they're doing and, you're going to throw in an invite, but if they don't want it, you know, I never see the person as one person. I see the person as the 2000 people that they know. So if it's not for them, they can, if, but I nurture that relationship, they are a source of referrals. So you always have to keep like, don't, you don't want to curl them in where they don't want to talk to you anymore because now you just lost those 2000 people that they know that potential referral. You know what I mean? Does that help? Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Here's another question. <laughs> Sorry, I'm full of them. Tonight. Oh, is it? Yeah. I said um, some chats. So when someone responds back and says, oh, thank you so much for the invite, but I'm not interested at this time, you know, just say basically they respond and say, thank you so much for thinking of me, but no thanks. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, I would say something to this one, to the extent of, um, all right. I know it's not for everybody. Thank you so much for responding and just like kind of like baby them a little bit and like, thank you. I really appreciate it. Most people don't even respond. So they're giving you a response. Just respond. Just be thankful for that. And then just throw in there, you know, I know it's not for you right now, but perhaps you know someone or you can think of someone who really needs help getting started. I would love like my mission this year is to help as many people as I can. So if you could refer me, I would be forever grateful. And if there's anything at all that you need, just let me know. That's what I say. Yeah. All right. That's what I say too. I just wondered, do you yeah. ever invite them again? Oh yeah. Six months okay. from now, they're getting another invite. They go okay. to my list of no's. I have my list of no's. And what I do with my list of no's, they never go away. I'm like that person that just bugs them forever. No, I really don't bug them though. Do you see? They love yeah. hearing from me. 
I don't know, that's in my head anyways. I, they go into my list of no's and every month I go through my list of no's and I, I comment on their stuff, I love on them, I send them videos, motivational videos, I send them a healthy recipe, whatever it is that we talked about or something that applies to them, they get something from me every single month. Every no that I've ever received, I have them all in a list and I take one day and I just message all those people and love on them and send them comments and whatever it is that I can do just to keep myself in front of them. And then six months from now, I'll say, Hey, I know you said no, but I know situations change <laughs> and I have this new challenge group. Would you be interested? Or maybe, you know, somebody who would be, you know, that's it. That's it. It, it. I don't know. It works. Most of my people have said no to me at some, at some point and they come back, but there is a trick to that. You have to be consistent on your page. You have to be posting every day, giving them value with your posts and all that stuff. You can't just disappear and then just keep inviting them because then you're not giving them anything. It's just a take relationship. It has to be a give and take. Any other questions? Anybody else want to add anything? I love seeing your conversations because they are a little bit different. I got that. I know situations change. I've never used that. <laughs> Guys, I know situations change. <laughs> Isn't it the truth? Oh, absolutely it is. Absolutely. I just, I love the fact that you showed how many times you've talked to that person. Because a lot of people give up because it's like, well, they said no. Well, they're not interested. Well, this isn't for me. Okay, well, if we would all say that and give up the first five times we try talking to people, we wouldn't be anywhere. You know, we wouldn't be where we are today, but even the most successful people have to go through all of those no's and eight to 10 follow-ups before someone joins us. 100%. So, I love seeing that. Absolutely. Hey, so I know you mentioned um, your one and a half hours in the morning and then three hours during your daughter's nap. So how much, how many hours per day or per week were you working your business when you were working full time, when you first started? Like that half hour was what I had, you know, on the weekends, I would take some time and just kind of plan it out. I would always, I've always been on top of my fitness journey. So that was kind of included in there, like me making my meal plans and my meal prep. And then also making my posts ahead of time, because when I was working, my med search floor was just crazy. I had like, I would literally guys, I would have days where I couldn't pee. Like it was that bad. So I had no time to post. So I had to use, you know, uh, a scheduling like post system or whatever to have that one post throughout the day. But I would post in the morning before I left for work during my workout. And then I would have buffer during the day sometime to give something. And then at night when I left work was when I would do my third post. And that was all I did. Um, that, that was it. It was like literally that half hour and then maybe two to three hours on the weekend. So guys, I mean, you heard it from her as well. You don't have to overcomplicate things. This is, this is not rocket science. Um, you just have to do the basics that Beachbody gives us and you don't have to reinvent anything because it's already given to us. But I really did also like um, how you talked about organizing your days with a theme. Um, that way you can make sure that you are getting everything that you need, that you're not seeing squirrels and losing track. Um, I'm someone who sees squirrels quite often. My team knows that, um, but, but yeah, it's true. It is, it is nice to have those certain days where you know what you're focusing on. So you're helping everyone that you need to with your business. I like that. It's good. Yeah. I don't like to feel like I'm like ignoring my coaches or my team or, you know, the one thing that I forgot to mention that I also do is I always, um, I start the day with a list of three things that I really need to do that um, usually it's like centered towards whatever theme of that day is. Um, so, but I always do that the day before. So today's, tomorrow's list is already done. I know what I need to do tomorrow. So I hate to wake up in the morning and be like, what do I gotta do today? Like it gives me anxiety. So <laughs> the day before I already make my list, I know that I need to do my follow-ups, my 10 invites, and then I need to connect with my challengers for the health vet and see how they're doing. So I have that list there. Just so I know, first thing in the morning, this is what I'm going to do. Like, this is my focus for tomorrow. And if these three things get done, then awesome, I can move on and do other things. But 
I feel really accomplished at the end of the day if these three things are <laughs> crossed off for some reason. I know it seems so small, guys, but I swear my business is built on little dumb things that people are like, really? That's all you do? I'm like, yeah, really, that's all I do. I used to have a list that was like a page long. And it would like, I would feel defeated at the end of the day because I would look and not everything was done. I would be like, gosh, I didn't get anything done today. And meanwhile, I did, but it was just such a long list. Realistically, nobody would get through it. So now I just focus on three things and I feel better about myself and my day. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was awesome. I, I took some tips away and some notes and I'm sure everyone else did as well. So guys, let's manage our time effectively and invite the crap out of Everyone. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Don't discriminate when you make your list. Don't discriminate. Just do your list. A hundred names. You need a hundred names. Just start the month with that. And if you go through a hundred names, then you get a hundred no's, which has happened to me before you add another hundred names and you go through that. And guess what? The next month is going to be amazing because all those people that told you no are going to come back and you're going to have double your successful points. As long as you're sharing your journey. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much, Bianca. That was amazing. We You're really welcome. appreciate you taking some time out for us. All right, guys. I will be posting the recording. If you guys have any questions, just post below in the team page, and I will try to help you guys out. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a good have night. Have a good night. See ya.